Instead of they continued with the private sector, a pharmacist in one of the pharmacy uh, company over here. Now you, you, you need some big, sound, private sector people sitting on your council. If you don't have them, then you just, you are disconnected. And when we come down to knowledge, I'll tell you how much we are disconnected. Anyway, so this is the story that I thought that let me introduce, not as Manu Chandaria, but the amount of time that I spent in this university to bring it to what it is. Uh, now, knowledge is an interesting discussion we have, we have been having, but knowledge without uh, distributing that knowledge of um, how do you put that knowledge, you know, knowledge is so much in this country, but they're all within the university's walls. It doesn't come out. It's there, it's discussed, it's more discussed, it's printed, but it never comes out for the public. Now, when we want to say something about the knowledge and the use of knowledge, and I, I understood why we are here, is that this, to create knowledge, and unless and until you can create a knowledge and distribute and, and get it out to the public, to the people, that knowledge remains within yourself. David, let me give an example of this. Some years back, I was invited at Jukwat when there are some people from prominent people on trying to find out what can be done. Uh, this is many years back and we are still food short. But at that time, uh, the people had come down and I was just as one of the guy who was invited. And when I entered Jukwat, I saw banana chain, mango chain, cassava chain, number of chains. And so, this discussion was at high level. So then the vice chancellor asked me, would you like to say, make any comment? So I said, yes, certainly I'd like to make a comment. I said that all this change that I saw downstairs and all this knowledge that you created, has it gone out? He said, no. Our interest is only to create knowledge and that's it. Do the research, find out, the, make the paper, and that's it. And I said, hey, there are from, from Neri until Nairobi, there are markets at, I don't know, 50 places. Go outside and sell your knowledge, whatever you got, even free. And after five years, when you travel from Neri to Nairobi, you will see banana all the way. You will see mangoes half, halfway. You will see pineapples, you will see rice. Everything started coming out. This is what, how the dissemination of the knowledge is. But if you don't, then it remains within the walls and we remain very happy. Oh, I did something about it. It cannot work. Today, the Kenya has got the biggest problem. Three and a half million youths are facing students. Come January, another 500,000 will be added. What knowledge have we given to them? Tell me. What, what are these kids going to go and do? The question is that the knowledge has to be in a way that it could be distributed and it could be acted upon, which is not there. We can talk about it, but we cannot do a thing about it. So, unless the knowledge and the knowledge society is disseminating the knowledge to the society and making it happen, then there is the possibility. The creation is, of course, I think somebody talked about the value, value sets. The value sets are very simple. Integrity, hard work, and the third one, humility. These are the three aspects. And unless we can distribute this, and get our children understand creating wealth like hundred of us or 
Today you've got, I don't know how many billionaires are there. That is not wealth of a nation. Wealth of a nation is when every home, child does not go to sleep empty food, with an empty stomach. There is something to look, look for tomorrow for every child, every student, every youth. That yes, this is my country, I can do something about it. I want to do something about it. And this is the whole nation's wealth has to be created. All the countries in Southeast Asia and, and Israel and others which keep on giving examples, how does it happen? It's not a miracle. It's done with human beings, just like you and me. But there has to be understanding that anything that we do, unless we create a wealth for the nation, that wealth, these billionaires or millionaires like me, it, is not, it cannot make a dent. And instead of that, it creates a lot of wrong information. So, for wealth creation, this three aspects, hard work, continuous attention towards what you are doing, and then having dreams that you want to be somebody. If you don't have the dreams, nothing happens. I started with 40 people. <coughs> 40 people and six members of the family on that company. Plus, 30, when we go home, six of us, plus 30 are at home. And we kept on arguing. And that's what the Kenyan does, kept on arguing. Shall we work for the family or shall we just take a job? I was I done masters in engineering. I could get a job. My cousin was a civil engineer. He can get a job. All of us would get a job nine to five. But then what happens to the family? The people who have sacrificed their life to what we are. My father was illiterate, three, three vernacular. He couldn't read, write, or speak English. My mother was totally illiterate. At the age of 55, she started writing the first alphabet. And yet, they had the vision that if the future of my children are going to be different, they must educate. And not educate, but hard work that goes with it. And so we decided nothing doing. We will work for the family and we will bring the family up. And from 40, it becomes 400, 800, and today we are spread out in the world. It is all doable. 